a major health epidemic. It's something that we need to be paying more attention to because it's going to really affect generations on and on. Today on Upfront, we're talking about trauma, how it can change DNA, and what Marquette's president, Dr. Mike Lovell, and his wife, Amy, are doing to treat it. I think just awareness and people talking about these issues is much greater than it was 18 months ago when we got started. Plus, a red flag law. The attorney general is pushing for it. Do you think there's enough data to show that, that something like that works or is effective? Should law enforcement and family members have the power to take someone's guns away? And a lead czar. The governor just created the position, Health Secretary Andrea Palm, on safeguarding drinking water and growing concerns about vaping. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us today. Trauma is a major health epidemic. That's according to medical health professionals who see its effects every day. Trauma is often silent and almost always costly. Trauma can be everything from witnessing a homicide to hearing gunshots in the neighborhood daily to living in poverty or surviving abuse or neglect. I talked to Kate Bennett at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. She works with kids who have experienced trauma through Children's Institute for Child and Family Wellbeing. Researchers are learning that trauma can actually change DNA. The way that genes are expressed when um, trauma is experienced can change the way um, that our DNA is. And if it's not treated and we don't have that resilience buffer and we don't help um, kids and families to build that, it's very likely they can pass those genes on to their children themselves. Bennett says those kids turn into adults who struggle with making good decisions, setting goals, and planning. Dr. Mike Lovell, the president of Marquette University, and his wife Amy are trying to heal trauma. They started a program called Scaling Wellness in Milwaukee, or SWIM. I met with them at Marquette last week. Here's our conversation. You could pick so many causes that you want to get behind, that you want to use your name and use your voice. And I want to hear from both of you, why did you choose trauma. Let's start with you, doctor. Well, this really goes back to uh, some of Amy's early work when she started RedGen and understanding first about resiliency and how important a characteristic that is for success in individuals' futures. And um, so I was, you know, between documentaries and speakers that Amy had brought into RedGen, I, I learned a lot. And then uh, we had a, a forum here on campus around disparities, particularly health disparities in Milwaukee. And we had a panel of experts from all different fields, from healthcare to education to the criminal justice system, uh, speaking about what are the root causes of the disparities in Milwaukee, and it became apparent that the root cause of much of the disparities is around trauma, and particularly early childhood trauma, and it kind of made a connection that if we can address the trauma that people of the city were experiencing, then we can actually maybe change the trajectory of their lives and help them be more resilient and successful. And why is this something you care so much about? Yeah, so I've always been passionate about mental health. I was a pharmacist in a psychiatric hospital in Pittsburgh, and um, we have family members who have struggled with mental health, and so that was always something that I felt drawn to. But in 2013, our daughter at the time was 13 and lost one of her best friends to suicide. And so we started this nonprofit to advocate for youth mental health and resiliency. And so we screened a documentary called Resilience very early on in our work, and it showcased Nadim, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris's work in California, but it uncovered the ACE study. There's a lot in that documentary about the ACE study, and it was like light bulbs going off in my head from stuff I had experienced, Mike had experienced, um, we also had an adopted child, and so it was like everything was just like everyone needs to know about this. And for people not familiar with the ACE study, that's basically a scale to talk about how much trauma you've experienced and what that means for your life, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, it's 10 questions, it's pretty simple. You can go and online, you can take it, and you know, from a scale from one to 10, you know, you answer yes to a question, you get your points. But yeah. like my ACE score is very low, but I experienced trauma when I was a child too with my mom having a brain aneurysm so you know it it doesn't scale everything but if you understand the science behind it I think you can see you can just see things a little bit differently and um, I don't know we just 
really felt like this is the underpinning. This could be the underpinning to a lot of mental health and opioid abuse and um, suicide. I mean, 12 times the risk of suicide with an ACE score of four or more. So it was like, how can people not know this? And you started SWIM, yeah. which yeah. is Scaling Wellness in Milwaukee. You've been having these meetings for about a year and a half now. What's been coming out of these meetings? What surprised you? What have you learned? So uh, first, um, you know, we started, one of the great things that happened is that first meeting we had in January uh, was only about 30 people. And we always started the meeting saying, well, if there's people that aren't here that need to be here, please invite them to the next meeting. So we've been watching this group grow and now we have people from almost 500 organizations, 800 people that are involved in, in the meetings, you know, all working towards this company. So to me, it showed me there's a great passion around this. The people are voluntarily coming to the meetings on their own time, no matter, as I said uh, before, it, it's people of walks of life. It's people with positions like myself at large organizations, to people in the grassroots doing you know, work, to people from the community. And so it's really, it's a great collaborative effort. And uh, so for me, the passion was something that surprised me. The other thing is, uh, what we didn't realize when we were getting to this is how important our history as a city around segregation and race and racism we're going to play into the conversations because if we don't acknowledge and address some of the things that have happened to people in the past, it's hard for us to move forward and promote healing. We need to have like the lived experience voice even more present because like even though Mike's had adversity, I've had adversity, my experience is not his experience, his experience is not mine, it's not what the city experience is. So like, I think we need to engage the community and I think that's what we're working you know, towards is to get more of the voice. And um, we've been elevating some of the work at the grassroots level in our large meetings, which people have said has been the best part of the meeting because they're learning about this great work that's being done that not everybody's aware of. And so we're really hoping that part of this effort will be the wind underneath their sails, um, not trying to jump in and say, we have the answers. Just collaboration, I think that's been surprising at how hard that is for people. Research says that this isn't just emotional either, that trauma can affect a person's DNA. They can literally pass this on to their children how do you combat that? Does that just feel like a huge task? <laughs> sure. I mean, I would say this whole effort, there's times Amy and I almost feel overwhelmed and Amy yeah. says sometimes she wants to run. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's true that there's significant science now getting put behind this. And uh, there are so many, uh, if you have a high A score of experiencing a lot of trauma, uh, there are so many ways it can affect your health and not just the mental health, it's the physical health, your, your chances for heart disease or diabetes or some of these other illnesses go way up as your ACE score goes up. Uh, but the good thing is, is what the science also shows is that you can actually retrain, you know, create new pathways in your brain. Your brain is much more plastic, plastic than they thought it was. And so through exercises and, you know, relationships and caring uh, for each other, you can actually reprogram, you know, pathways in your brain so you can heal from some of the trauma's experience so that you can actually <clears throat> help your children maybe not experience the same things that you've experienced. How do you measure success with this project? What would have to happen for you to say, you know what, we did a good job with this? Yeah, so you're talking to somebody whose life's work feels like it's, you know, like with suicide prevention and mental health, like I feel like one life changed is worth it. And this is not just a Milwaukee thing. Yeah, no. right. It's all over the country, all over the world. And, and maybe getting back to your thing about success, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, again, this is such a large problem, you know, and sometimes it's overwhelming to think about how we're gonna come up with a solution, but to me, it's, it's making steady progress and working towards, you know, a, a better pathway for people. And I will say the a couple things that I think that we have made significant progress. First of all, I think just awareness and people talking about these issues is much greater than it was 18 months ago when we got started. And I think uh, the conference we had last September, you know, where we had, you know, 1,200 people you know, in the Fisers Forum and in the Convention Center, where we brought in experts from around the country telling us and helping us understand, you know, trauma and how it affects people and how it affects communities and what some of the solutions are for those, you know, has really helped just to have conversations. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate yes. your time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. 
Trauma is not just a Milwaukee problem. The levels tell me rural Wisconsin struggles just as much, often because of job loss and opioid addiction. They're inviting everyone to attend the Summit on Poverty and Swim Conference. It's happening Monday and Tuesday, October 7th and 8th at the Wisconsin Center in Milwaukee. You can see my full interview with Mike and Amy Lovell on our website, the upfront section of WISN.com. Up next. This is just about a gun grab. The controversial red flag law. Who's against it and why Wisconsin's Attorney General supports it. Upfront, brought to you by WPS Health Insurance.